Sometimes you find ideas for the video in the most unexpected places. Last week my missus was cleaning the house and guess what I found in the trash bin? Recognize what it is? A blast from the past, fidget spinner. Few years back I had these things lying around my house everywhere. I easily had few dozens of them. So I rescued this one, I gave it to my son and we started remembering competitions that we had to determine whose fidget spinner is going to run the longest and also we were speculating which one is the fastest. And then my son, knowing my Arduino hobby, suggested saying can you settle this once and for all by measuring RPM of this little thing? Do you think it's an interesting idea for a project? If you do, stick around! My initial idea for measuring RPM was to use this magnetic sensor module. It utilizes a hole sensor, which you can see here. I have previously used this magnetic sensor in a video where I used it to create a persistence of vision display. In that project, when the hole sensor detected the magnet, it triggered a flashing sequence of the set of LEDs. When applied to a spinning fan, it displayed text, current time, etc. This module has three pins. One connects to ground, one to five volts, and the last one to digital pin two. I am planning to use interrupts, and in the Arduino Nano only pins two and three support hardware interrupts. First let's write a simple code to see if and how this whole sensor works. The code is straightforward. In the setup we open the serial monitor to display data from the sensor, and set the digital pin two to which the sensor is connected as an input. In the loop we perform a digital read from the sensor pin and output the result to the serial monitor. Let's upload the code. As you can see we are reading a high signal at the pin. I have attached a small magnet to the fidget spinner. Let's see what happens when I bring it close to the whole sensor. As soon as the magnet is detected the signal changes to low. Now let's adjust the code to count the spins. We need a counter variable for this. Instead of setting digital pin 2 as input, we will define an interrupt on that pin. Whenever the signal on that pin transitions from high to low, the ISR counting will be executed. The only action in that ISR is to increment the counter by 1. In the loop, instead of displaying the result of the digital read command, we display the value of the counter variable. Let's reload the code. For now, there are no spins reported and we see zero in the serial monitor. Here is our fidget spinner. Let's spin it. As we move the magnet close to the sensor, you will notice a red LED flashing on the module and with each flash, the counter variable increases. So that's great, right? Not so fast. There are some significant issues to address. The sensor is highly sensitive and even a slight movement of the magnet can disrupt the counting. Bringing it too close can cause the spinner to hit the sensor and the magnet mounted on the fidget spinner throws it off balance. This means that while we can measure RPM, the value won't really reflect the spinner's true RPM. Magnetic sensors are excellent for RPM measurement in calibrated setups, such as the fan project I previously worked on. But our current project isn't one of those cases. So what other alternatives do we have? In the past, I have utilized this laser transmitter module to send signals, and this laser receiver module to intercept them. We can detect if the laser beam is broken and Arduino can promptly respond to such occurrences. I have used these modules in few projects, including intruder detection circuits, as well as for transmitting meaningful information like Morse code. For our specific application, the question is whether these modules can handle the frequency of signal changes required. When dealing with the sending alphabet through Morse code, we needed to detect 78 signals corresponding to 26 letters. This meant we had to recognize not only the signals themselves, but also their lengths, resulting in 156 signal changes that needed to be detected. It took 17 seconds to achieve this, meaning we are able to detect 9 signal changes in a second. Now let's consider fidget spinners. According to the ChatGPT, they spin 
at the rate of approximately 2000 spins per minute. With a three-arm fidget spinner, you need to detect three signal changes to register a single spin, leading to 6000 signal changes in 60 seconds. This equates to 100 signal changes per second, which is 10 times more than we encountered when dealing with Morse code. Additionally, Morse code transmission of the alphabet was not always 100% successful, primarily due to the factors like longer distances, calibration issues, and the need to measure not only the occurrence of the signal, but also its length. In this scenario, the modules would be perfectly calibrated and the hit rate of 99% would be perfectly acceptable. Will it work? I can't wait to find out. I want to measure the RPM of the fidget spinner when it is in horizontal position. So I need a stand that will allow me to mount both a laser transmitter and a receiver and calibrate them. Tinkercut will come to the rescue. This is what the design looks like. Now let's fit all the components. Starting with placing the laser transmitter at the top of the stand. Let's power it from Arduino so that the laser is projected at the bottom. Now we can mount the laser receiver, calibrating the device in the process. The last thing we need is three jumper wires that will allow us to connect the laser transmitter to Arduino and our RPM measuring device is ready. Now let's look at the code. Here we also have a counter variable. Then we have RPM variable to store the result and also a test start variable holding the timestamp at which the spin counting started. The setup function is identical to the whole sensor code. Let's simplify the attach interrupt command. The interrupt at digital pin is represented by the value zero. In the first execution of the ISR, we set the value of the test start variable with millis. I actually start counting spins 10 milliseconds after detecting the first signal change. This is to eliminate any glitches when slotting the spinner into the laser range. Let's look at the first spin. We register a falling signal event when the laser beam is broken. This triggers the ISR in which the counter is increased by one. During the full spin of the fidget spinner, we encounter this situation three times. Let's continue spinning until we reach three second sample. It's time to calculate the RPM. The counter value contains the number of falling signal occurrences. We know that the time was three seconds and to obtain the number of spins, we need to divide the counter value by three. So in 3 seconds we had this many spins, so how many did we have in 60 seconds? This will be our RPM. We calculate it from proportion. And here is the formula. We multiply the number of spins by 60 and divide by 3. We can now use this formula in our code to set the value of the RPM variable. We are resetting both the test start and counter values back to 0. In the loop, whenever RPM value is greater than 0, we output it to serial monitor. After doing this, we reset that value to zero as well. The way this code is structured is that as long as the fidget spinner keeps turning, the whole process can start all over again and within next three seconds we'll receive an updated RPM value. This will continue until the fidget spinner comes to a complete stop. With the code out of the way, we can now connect the RPM measuring device to Arduino. In the explain code, I output the results to the serial monitor. To better display the results in the video footage, I have added a small I2C OLED display. I will include the link to the altered code in the description below. In the code, I have also increased the sampling from 3 to 4 seconds. The OLED display connects to the I2C bus through pins A4 and A5. This particular display requires 3.3 volts to operate, so we power it from 3.3 volts pin of Arduino. Next, we connect the laser transmitter to the Arduino ground and 5 volts. Finally, we have the laser receiver also powered using ground and 5 volts pin. The signal pin goes to digital pin 2, which responds to changes on that pin and runs the ISR we have developed. The last thing to ensure is that the both laser modules are properly calibrated. 
After powering the Arduino it looks like they are. Now let's load the code and see how it works. The device initializes and awaits the first fidget spinner to obstruct the laser beam. The first fidget spinner that we will test is the one we looked at already. Let's spin it. And you can see that after 4 seconds the first RPM value is reported. Let's await another 4 seconds and here is another one. This continues until the fidget spinner stops. Actually this one seems to be running forever. Let's reset Arduino and we are ready for another spinner. This one used to be the best in my son's collection but it seems that with time the bearings are no longer working that well. Let's spin it. And you can see that it is much slower and comes to a complete stop in around 12 seconds. Yay! Mission accomplished! By my son demands more analytics. He wants RPM, spinning times, some line charts. Sounds like an interesting idea for a project, but I don't think this little OLED display is gonna handle this. I need to look for some alternative. So I'm not saying no to this project. Stay tuned to my channel and maybe in a few weeks time I'll release it. It's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, do your usual stuff, like, share and subscribe. But if you want to say thank you by buying me a virtual drink, go Patreon, PayPal or YouTube membership. I'll see you in my next video. Ciao!